Hello, paper crafters! Today's video is a collaboration project with Christina Griffiths, an amazing card maker and die cut artist. I just love watching her create. This time we have decided to make a shaped card with lots of flowers each. My project is a card in the shape of a flower booth, and uh, this is how I made it. To make a base for my card, I'll be using these dies by Poppy Stamps. They are called Cottage Platform and Gates. I've used the white cardstock for them. Next, I'm masking off the fence, placing the tape right along the scored line. And then I'm going to color the rest of the area gray using Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. The supplies I'm using are listed on my blog. You can find the link in the description. To create a pavement texture, I'm using Brick Embossing Folder by Sizzix. I'm inking up one flap of the folder with black soot, and then I'm positioning my card inside. I'm only going to emboss over the gray area. Now I am repeating this process to expand the pattern so that it covers the whole card base, except the fence. This is what my card base looks like now. The next step is attaching the gate to it. I have folded them zigzag-wise and then I'm just applying a little bit of glue to the flaps and sticking them down. This is the quick drying tacky glue by Scotch. Here is the finished card base. Now I am going to turn it into the flower booth. I will be using this roof die but uh, I'm going to expand it to be five and a half inches long. So I will leave one cutting edge hanging off the plates. Then I will align the roof with the pattern and repeat the procedure. I'm sorry to say that this die is from the set that has been discontinued and is hard to find in stores. But uh, you can easily create a similar shape using a scallop punch or a border die. To color the roof, I'm going to use three distressing colors. First, I'm applying some worn lipstick around the edges. Then comes dried marigold. I'm covering the rest of the area with it. The last color is seedless preserves. If there is a debossed pattern on a project like I have here, then applying distress inks with your finger helps to enhance it. Next, I have positioned a piece of white cardstock on a scoring board and I'm scoring it at each one quarter of an inch mark. Now I'm cutting it into strips that are three quarters of an inch wide. It means each strip has uh, three sections. Then I'm folding the scored lines like that. I'm applying some glue onto one section and sticking another one on top. Those sturdy three-layer paper strips are nothing else than pillars to, to hold my roof. I feel like an architect. So I'm sticking them into the fence.
I'm using the grid on a mat for better alignment and then I'm defining how high the roof should be. Then I'm going to trim the pillars and stick the roof down. And this is my flower booth, but it's still empty, so I'll be using some poppy stamps dies to create a kind of furnishing for it. This die is garden cart, and uh, to give it an old wood look, I'm covering the die cut with brushed corduroy, and then rubbing some ground espresso with my finger. To make this piece bo both sturdy and dimensional, I'm going to add two more layers of cardstock. This is the technique that I'm going to use to nearly all the remaining elements. I'll be either doubling or tripling up the layers. To make this black piece look like an old metal, I'm going to rub on some metallic paint. To assemble the card, I'm attaching the metal elements on top of the wooden one. The glue in a needle applicator bottle is a Ranger Multimedia Matte. And this is how I am going to create all the furnishing. Uh, all the elements are the combination of old wood and old metal. I'm attaching the bushel baskets to the wagon. This hanging basket is also an old die that is hard to find, but sometimes I feel that I want to use the oldies as well. Some of them are really my favorites. I will also be using these tables, cans and pots on a project. And uh, the real star of this project is this die set by Impression Obsession. It is called Spiral Flowers and it cuts out five different flower shapes. We'll need a lot of those flowers plus some leaves too. Next, I will be using Distress Inks again to ink up all the flowers. It's important to color them at both sides. Now with a quilling tool, I am curling up the spiral, starting from the outer edge and moving towards the middle. Then I am going to apply a bit of hot glue onto that uh, tiny circle at the end and sealing up the flowers.
I'm using exactly the same technique for all the flowers, but they are going to look differently because the dyes are different shapes. These dye sets are tiny floral bouquet and lovely lily pads, and we are going to knit them too. And this is how I attach the flowers to this wagon with baskets. First I'm sticking some of them with a the hot glue close to the edge of the basket. Then I am adhering some leaves behind the flowers. Not only do they add some interest, but also they serve as a base for attaching more flowers. So now I am sticking more of those daisies right on top of the leaves. And this is how I am going to fill up other baskets, cans and a wheelbarrow. At this point I have decided to attach pieces of vellum behind the fence. And this is how to plant the flowers in the pots. I'm going to insert some stems into the into this slit. Then I'm securing them at the wrong side with a dot of hot glue. And after that, I'm attaching the flowers to the stems. To create more dimension, I'm using some pieces of craft foam to attach different pieces to the fence. Because of all this dimension, the card will not be mailable in an envelope. It should be either sent in a box or hand delivered. And of course, it can be used as a decoration.
Thank you for watching my video. I greatly encourage you to head over to Christina's video and check out her shaped floral card. Have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you soon.